Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming this afternoon. My name is Donna Arbogast. I'm the Vice President of Public Affairs here at Next Star Washington Hospital Center. We have two speakers this afternoon for you. Uh, Dr. Jack Saba, who is Director of Trauma, will be sharing with you a little update on the condition of the two patients who were brought to us from the tragic city shooting in Virginia earlier this week. Um, he will take questions after this, a few questions, two things. Um, in, in some cases, he won't be able to answer all of the questions and uh, try to protect our patient's privacy as much as possible, but we are going to share some additional information with you. Um, he also has another meeting to go to right after this. Our, our residents are graduating in eight weeks, he is heading to that, so we are trying to keep this somewhat tight. Um, we do have a printed copy after this program, is over, after this briefing is over, we have a printed copy of his remarks, so you'll have that for your, uh, for your record. Uh, before Dr. Saba joins us, though, I'd like to introduce Brett Horton, who is the Chief of Staff for Congressman Steve Scalise, and he has something he'd like to read on behalf of the family. Good afternoon. My name is Brett Horton, and I'm Whip Scalise's Chief of Staff. I have a brief statement from Jennifer Scalise regarding Wednesday's attack. On behalf of Steve and our children, I want to thank everyone from the bottom of our hearts for the incredible amount of prayers and warm wishes that we have received since Wednesday's events. We are especially appreciative of the strong outpouring of love and support from our neighbors, friends from across Louisiana and across the country, as well as President Trump, Vice President Pence, and all of Steve's colleagues who have reached out during this challenging time. Most importantly, we are forever grateful for the heroism of Special Agents Crystal Greiner and David Bailey, who saved the lives of everyone at the baseball field that morning, including Steve's. Crystal and David have been family to us for years, and we ask that you continue to pray for their full recovery. I'd also like to personally thank all of the first responders who bravely assisted at the scene, as well as the entire staff of MedStar Washington Hospital Center for their continued excellent care. Our family asks that you continue to pray for Steve, Matt Micah, Zach Barth, and all of those hurt in this attack, and keep them in your thoughts and prayers during their recovery. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Jack Saba, the Director of Trauma at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Uh, I'm here to give you an update on the two patients that we cared for after the shooting in Alexander, Virginia on June 14th. Special Agent Crystal Greiner of the United States Capitol Police uh, sustained an ankle gunshot wound. She remains in the hospital, she's in good condition, and she's in good spirits. Uh, Congressman Scalise sustained a single rifle wound that entered in the area of the left hip it traveled directly across towards the other hip in what we call a trans-pelvic gunshot wound. The round fragmented and did substantial damage to bones, internal organs, and blood vessels. I understand he was awake on scene, but by the time he was transported by helicopter to the MedStar Trauma Center, he was in shock. My partners, Dr. Tony Shiflett and Dr. Christine Trankium, saw him in the trauma center with uh, the other doctors and nurses there. Uh, they treated him there and quickly brought him to the operating room where we performed surgery. In the operating room, he was in critical condition and received many units of transfused blood for ongoing hemorrhage from multiple locations. Uh, he received truly amazing anesthesia care from Dr. Eric Skolnick and Dr. Scott Frank Due to their great work, we were able to get him through that procedure, and we then took him to the radiology suite, where he underwent an additional procedure by Dr. Arshad Khan to further control bleeding. From there, we went to the intensive care unit, uh, where he got additional care under the direction of Dr. Chadi Abwasili, and he remains in the ICU today. Yesterday, Dr. Trankium and I did an additional operation, and Dr. Robert Golden, our director of orthopedic trauma, did an operation to repair a broken bone in his leg. The congressman's status remains critical. We are encouraged by improvement in his condition over the last 36 hours. We have controlled the internal bleeding, and his vital signs have stabilized. He will require additional operations to manage abdominal injuries, 
and other bone injuries. Predicting the length of his hospital stay is difficult today. Presumably it will be easier in some days when more time has passed and we have more information. After he leaves the hospital, he will require a period of healing and of uh, rehabilitation. On behalf of the MedStar trauma team, I want to thank the special agents on the scene as well as the first responders for everything that they did for those shooting victims. We are all well aware here at the MedStar Washington Hospital Center of all that those folks did to save these people. We here salute their commitment, their dedication, and their skill. I can answer a few questions, but as Donna said, uh, it's possible that we will not be able to answer all the questions due to privacy concerns. Dr. Sump, just a practical question. You described multiple procedures. There's been some confusion on the phone. Many of us are not medical professionals. What is the fair assessment? How many surgeries did that get in? You talked about going in and out of the yeah. heart. So how, what's the best way to characterize these procedures and how many? Well, I, it, there's actually a bit of semantic confusion there, and I leave it to you how to characterize. I think the reason for the semantic confusion is he went from an operation to a procedure that I mentioned in interventional radiology. Uh, typically, we don't call that an operation or a surgery, although really uh, it has many similarities. There's anesthesia, and, uh, and in many ways it, it uh, resembles an operation. Did he come back up from anesthesia between the two? No. Uh, the, the second possible point of confusion is that yesterday he underwent uh, an operation that involved two separate surgical teams. It was in the same room in one continuous sitting uh, under with one set of anesthesia, but, but at first it was my team doing abdominal surgery and then Dr. Golden's team doing orthopedic surgery. So again, the opportunity for confusion about whether you count that as one or two. And, and what a medical professional view is if you were in one of our articles, the numbers you would say would be what the most accurate. Oh, come on. Two. What are uh, your major concerns going forward at this point in terms of his recovery and do you expect Mr. Scalise to live uh, in most respects a normal life and what are the limitations that you foresee based on your experience? Well, I don't want to get too far out ahead of, of myself. Um, all of us who care for severely injured patients are very reluctant in the first few days to start predicting which way things can go with all the branches in the road that are to come. Uh, usually, the, the initial period is about hemorrhage control. And I feel like we've made a lot of progress in, about that. And hopefully that is not gonna be uh, our, our biggest enemy any longer. Uh, other things uh, to worry about include infections um, and uh, other complications that come about from intensive care. And in terms of rehabilitation? Well, I hopefully you'll have an opportunity at some point to maybe talk to Dr. Golden about the orthopedic aspects. I think that uh, we fully expect him to be able to walk, to be able to do, uh, I, again, I don't want to speak to Dr. Golden, but my understanding is that he will be able to walk and hopefully run. As far as the degree of athletic limitation, I think I will kick all that to Dr. Golden. Hey, Dr. Sir. you kind of addressed this a little bit already, but I think a lot of people heard shot in the hip and then were surprised to hear that he was in critical condition. Can you describe what made these injuries so severe or so difficult to treat? Well, I think uh, I've thought about that because I was surprised by some of the reports also. I would encourage you to uh, talk to your military medical colleagues about what it means to be shot with a high velocity rifle in the hip region. Because um, most of us would not even think to, to consider that a benign wound. As I said, in his case, the major initial, initial risk to life is because of the hemorrhage that results um, when that bullet travels through blood vessels. So it's a bleeding, it's a it's bleeding, bleeding thing. Dr. Sama, has he been conscious at all during his time in the hospital? Has he been able to talk to his family, to any of his friends or anything like that? Has he been able to take visitors? Of course. He's been sedated, but uh, we've been able to turn down that sedation, sedation enough for him to respond to his family members, and he clearly knows that they're there and appreciates their presence. Does he seem to understand all what he's going through at this point? I don't want to get into the, the details of what I think he's going through. I think that, um, we're happy to see that he can respond to, to uh, us and his family. Dr. Summers, was the broken leg a result of that bullet splintering when Kendrick is canceled, or was that about, did that happen when he fell after he was shot? That was a result of the bullet. Is the bullet um, the bullet out? Typically, that's the first question that gunshot victims ask is, when are you taking the bullet out? It's quite common that we don't remove bullets and fragments, and that's the case.
case here as well. That uh, I have not counted, but I would guess that there are hundreds of fragments. Um, and usually there's more risk involved in trying to find and remove those fragments than benefit. So we have no intention to try to remove all bullet fragments at this point. I think I, we've decided we're not going to get into too much detail about specific uh, internal injuries at this time. Dr. Yes, sir. Agent Griner, when might she be released? Um, I don't have information on that. Dr. Golden uh, has operated on her, and uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, she has had one operation at this point. Dr. Golden could answer as to whether additional work will be needed. Bottom line right now, you sound optimistic. Well, you know, I like to say it's my job to be pessimistic, and so if you accuse me of being optimistic, I feel bad about that. Um, I feel a lot more confident and a lot more optimistic than I did uh, two, three days ago. How serious of a situation, like how would you describe the seriousness of it when he was first here and the risk that he could possibly die? I would say that when he arrived, he uh, was in critical condition with an imminent risk of death. Again, it's, it's too hard to say at this point. Once we get through uh, a few more days, we might be able to prognosticate a little better, but now there are just too many folks in the road and to, to say when the final day is. He will certainly be in the hospital for a considerable period of time, Dr. presumably I'm, weeks. I was surprised to hear you say that, that you expect him to walk again, even perhaps run again, given the fact that his hip was shattered. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that the main support structure of, of, of the erect body? What kind of repair work is done to see that he can't walk again? Well, you're correct. It's a, it's a critical piece of support for uh, standing and walking. And again, I, Dr. Golden would be a better person to answer that question. Um, but our uh, orthopedic trauma surgeons are very good and they can work miracles. It, in that vein, there was no nerve damage or anything like that that would, would impair his ability? I think also I will sort of uh, stop at the really detailed uh, assessment of each individual injury. Again, we sort of decided that we weren't going to go quite there today. I know you can't say for sure, but has there, has there been any thought to downgrading this condition? I have not given much thought to word choice as of yet. We've been <laughs> awfully busy. I haven't given much thought to, to that kind of word choice yet. Um, I have to admit I find that challenging because there's not really strict definitions. Your idea of critical and my idea of critical and Donna's idea of critical are probably all radically different. I think it's sort of a misperception that those terms are well-defined, so I usually steer away from them. You said he was in critical when he came in and in imminent risk of death. While he's still in critical, is the imminent risk of death been lifted? I think that uh, his risk of death right now is, is substantially lower than when he came in. Certainly, whatever you think of the word critical, he was as critical as you can be when he came in. So there's no controversy about word choice there. A couple more questions. Any other? Does the risk of infection increase with each surgery? No, I wouldn't say that. It in increases over a period of time. Usually, uh, infections typically don't happen in the first couple days, but then you enter a time period where infections are more common regardless of surgery yes or surgery no. What do you think the next step in the treatment right now? Operation. Yes, he has uh, additional operations that he will need before leaving the hospital. Is there a recuperation period between now and whenever the next operation would be? I, mean, I, I guess I don't know how aggressive you would be in sort of that timetable. Yeah, I think that the next operation would likely take place within 48 hours, but it's a pretty dynamic decision-making process. Uh, what, what typically takes place when patients are severely injured like this uh, is called damage control surgery. And that, what that means <coughs> is that rather than trying to do everything in one operation on day one, we generally stage the operations. The first operation is dedicated usually mainly to bleeding control and the other types of work you have to do are staged for uh, later operations. You said the infection is a significant risk. I think so. 
so I think that's a good possibility. Hard to say. Thank you all very much. expected to make a full recovery. I think that a, uh, an excellent recovery is a good possibility. Thank you all very much. For Thank, that. You. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have the printed statement uh, available for you here. And we have How about the tax bill? How about the tax bill? Is that